welcome back to Thursday Conversations with the Fashionista Professor. And so today I'm gonna continue with some of the questions that you asked me. And uh, <clears throat> so you guys seem to be interested in how I adjusted to life in America. And so that that, that, that that gave me room for pause. I had to think about that. Uh, so how was it for me adjusting to life in America? Well, uh, um, like I mentioned in the other vlogs, um, the first year was the hardest, you know, leaving my parents, leaving my family, leaving my friends. And then, of course, when you get here, you have to sort of adapt to the culture and the cultural nuances. Um, like, for instance, um, my students at the university say I have a deep African French and English accent. And they say my accent is very difficult to understand. So I used to speak in a very quiet voice. But when you keep having people ask you to repeat yourself over and over and over again, which is a pet peeve of mine, by the way, you, you tend to learn how to speak louder so hopefully they can understand you the first time in lieu of you having to repeat yourself over and over and over again. And um, sometimes, um, you know, my friends or like uh, my students at the university we say ooh la la it's so difficult to understand you and I'm like yeah I do have an accent because I'm originally from Nigeria and likewise you guys have an accent to me so when you speak to me <clears throat> I perceive an accent because I didn't grow up you know hearing that accent and so it's, it's, it's very very interesting because till today I still cannot pick up all the different accents like the Chicago, the New York accents, the Tennessee. Um, I do know that when I first came here, um, you know, the long guys, the guys that will do my lawns or, you know, clean my pool, it was very, very difficult for me to understand them when they spoke to me because of the Tennessee accent. And it was difficult for them to understand me as well. And till today, when I watch movies, I use subtitles for the, you know, subtitles. Uh, generally, I'll use general subtitles if they don't have that. If they have one for the hearing impaired, I'll use that because it's usually difficult for me to understand some of the nuanced words um, that they say. Uh, just like it's difficult for Americans to understand some of the words that I say. Like, for instance, I remember what time I was lecturing at the university. So I was saying, sure, when you have half a dozen or six of the other, and my students were looking at me with this look of bewilderment and bemusement. And finally I said, don't you guys understand what I'm saying? When you're talking about sex, sex, and I said, one, two, three, four, five, sex. And they, you know, they all uttered a sigh of relief. Oh, ooh, we thought you were saying sex. I said, no, sex is different from sex. And so, you know, those little nuanced differences make, um, make the difference or is the difference between whether somebody can actually understand you or not. So for instance, when we talk about the, you know, the legality of Mariana, um, I do find that people tend to have a problem understanding me when I say Mariana. Mariana, I, I think that's how other people say it, Mariana, but um, <laughs> so usually in class I'll say, okay, I'm talking about Mariana, weed, hashish, get it? Okay, and so those were some of the things, and when I first came here, it was more and more pronounced. Uh, like we would go to a restaurant, I would say, ooh, could I please have some crushed red pepper? And they'll look at me like I'm speaking German. And I'll say, Pepe, Pepe, don't you know what Pepe is? <laughs> and so, um, yeah, and then when I'm on, like, I have, like, maybe Comcast or 
affinity or something like that and I'm trying to explain a concept to them and they keep asking me to repeat if my one of my sons um, uh, was home I'll go okay you, please you go ahead and explain to them because my children they don't have an accent so um, so when I first came you know those were the things that were difficult um, for me to adjust to there is a certain kind of frustration that comes with being unable to party that you are speaking to understand what you're talking about um there is a quiet frustration therein and like even till today i detest absolutely having to repeat myself i mean i absolutely detest it i don't know why i mean it's just the sheer waste of spending the time reiterating again and again and again and again and again what you have said and so those are some of the things that um you have to deal with as you know a foreign born that comes here and you have to get used to the nuances of the new culture so yeah the first year was very difficult like i mentioned earlier after the first year I went back to nigeria i was like i'm done I, i'm not i'm not going back to america anymore um i think i'll prefer to stay in nigeria my sister was like no 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 you you can say you're done you have to give it the, a chance to work um it can be difficult you know because the culture is different the environment is different from what you grew up from and so you know you have to give it a chance before you can say Ooh, la, la, you're done you're not going back anymore to leave there I mean I meant to leave uh, it was so fine to visit and stuff like that and so yeah uh, those were some of the things that you know I had to get over um, when I first came here and then after I had my first baby um, I brought my brother my immediate younger brother over to go to TSU and I was paying for him to go to TSU and I gave him the sports car if you guys recall and bought myself an uh, automatic and so that kind of sort of made things a little bit better my mom would come and visit you know when she was on vacation because then she was the principal of a school my dad was still in power but my mom had more leeway because you know the school system you guys have long summers and Christmas and stuff like that so my mom was uh, always visiting because my mom loves to travel and um, so yeah that was how I got over or how I managed to deal with the first day in terms of cultural nuances specifically when you're talking about accent you know relating to other people and stuff like that I mean there are so many facets of the adaptations that you know one has to go and so th that, that is a very interesting thing I mean when you see somebody that is foreign born you know take a moment to, to talk to them and understand mm -hmm. where they're coming from um, one of the things that I will say about the Igbo land um, in Nigeria is that the people are very welcoming. They're very, very welcoming to foreigners. You know, um, I remember when I was in school, uh, we had exchange students from America. Um, you know, they were both African Americans and Caucasians. And, you know, we'll hang out with them, talk to them, we'll talk to them about the food and stuff like that actually having a genuine interest in learning more about the person um, helps the person adapt you know to um, a strange circumstance and so so those were the things and, and one of the things that I will have to say is that when I was working in research at Vanderbilt I worked in research in dermatology research at Vanderbilt for four years I was working on melanoma research with um, the director for dermatology and he was the absolute best he made me you know he appreciated my qualifications you know he never doubted it he could understand me very well um which i really appreciated that was the first raw job 
I had in America. I had a prior job working at Chichis, but that's that's another story. We're gonna talk about that. Um, so yeah, you know, I say, you know, find a way of condensing the experiences that I had the first year I was in America. I think I can, I will try and find a way to articulate it to you guys, but the, the first year is usually the hardest because, um, you know, that is usually the first time, at least for me, that I had been away from my family. So it was the hardest. But look at me now. <laughs> when I go back to Nigeria with my kids, um, <laughs> I remember I went to Nigeria. I'm going to try and do a vlog of some of the tips because I haven't had the opportunity to edit them. But the last time I went to Nigeria with my two youngest, the middle one and the youngest kid, um, I remember <laughs> the gentleman that was showing us around. So we had a security guard and, you know, sort of a tall guy that was showing us around. So he would get in the car with us and, you know, if I wanted to go to the store, the kids wanted to go to the store. He, I would drive and, you know, he would show us the way because I could not remember everything. It's been decades since I left. And um, so my middle son would speak to him because my middle son got a laptop for his son. And my middle son would explain to him and everything. And he would look sagely at my son and nod his head. And then my son will, uh, after my son would finish talking, he would turn like the guy, the guide will turn to me and say, what did he just say? So I'll have to explain everything my son had explained to him in English, in Igbo. My son was like, does he have a problem with hearing? Because he doesn't seem to understand what I'm saying. I said, no, he doesn't have a problem with hearing. It's just that to him, you have a deep American accent. So there you go. So. When I'm in America, everybody thinks I have a deep African, British, French accent. And then of course, when my kids go to Nigeria, um, people think they have an American accent. So, so yeah, it's, it's, it's all cultural. Um, I, when I travel all over the world, um, some places it, it's, it's not as pronounced. They understand that you have an accent, but it's not a big deal you move on. So that's it. That's where I'm going to stop at today because I don't want this to get too long. Um, I think it's, it's more fun when I share small snippets instead of making it too, too long. So let's go ahead and get to one of the favorite parts where I showcase this fabulous, fabulous fabulous sequin gown <laughs> so let's go ahead and talk about the gown and do the fashion show for the gown so hold on music
for the fashionista professor who we're modeling of this fabulous, fabulous, fabulous sequin gown from my closet. Look, just take a moment and look at the design of the gown. It has a little bit of stretch and then it has these clear straps that you don't see. Now let me go ahead and try it without the belt. to try but with the belt and without the belt and thank you so much for joining us today for the conversations with the fashionista professor I hope you enjoyed the conversation please do hit the subscribe button if you haven't already here or here depending on where you may be on your screen and please do turn on the notifications such that you'll be notified when next I upload another vlog so till next time that I upload another vlog Thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for being with us. And please don't forget to hit the subscribe button. And do stay safe. Kisses. Kisses from far away. Kisses from far away. Kisses from far away. Care, Messiah.